good evening all uh, we'll start with today's session i hope i'm audible to everyone So our session for today is piping and instrumentation diagram. Let's meet the trainer for the day. Our trainer for the day is Mr. Rajaram Yu. He's working as a lead process engineer. Uh, he has over 17 plus years of expertise in yeah, performing yeah. plant yeah. operations, pre-commissioning, commissioning and performance monitoring activities. He has been an integral part of several turnkey projects for ITRAX engineering. We heartily welcome you to the session, sir. I kindly request everyone to please mute your mics. Since the session is started, uh, at the end we'll be having a doubt clearing so we can unmute and ask it out. For now, please mute your mics. Uh, now I request Rajaram sir to take forward the training session. Thank you. Uh, okay, ma'am. Shall we wait? Because we have only 26 participants now. Uh, so we'll start so we'll start the session the people will be joining anyhow we can start the session okay ma'am okay okay uh, okay i think hope uh, uh, the who are all attending the training are recently passed out from the college uh, and the two i think uh, uh, mechanical engineers right so you can use the chat box to uh, respond to me So, uh, students, uh, have you people visited any site visit in the in your college or after college? Site visit mean any industrial visit? So you can mention the names, whatever the site or industries you have visited. Okay, Nivali Power Plant next. Any other? Okay, Carbon Private Limited next. CPCL, Line, Sabic, St. Gobain. Okay, CPCL. Okay, Kodangalam, Nuclear Power Plant. Okay. Hope uh, all are uh, mechanical engineers, right? NTPC, okay. Okay, Aramco. Okay, Fia also chemical engineer also there, okay. Okay, mechanical, okay. So today, uh, our today's topic is uh, uh, PNIDs. PNID is nothing but piping and instrumentation drawings or diagrams. Okay, instrumentation control. Student, have we visited? Uh, Thanks, <laughs> Maya. Hey. Hey. Uh, students, I uh, ho hope uh, my screen is visible to you. Uh, I am showing an uh, industrial uh, this one image.
hope, hope the screen is visible to you, the industrial. Okay. Uh, okay. So you, you, you almost you all mentioned uh, uh, industries related to uh, production units like refinery or power plant or some other chemical industries. So wherever you go to the chemical plants, we'll be seeing like a, a big columns, like uh, you can see like these images, right? So uh, this is the uh, production industry or manufacturing industry. So how we can uh, see this in the pa paper, like paper in the sense like a uh, drawing. So the part, uh, uh, the chemical engineer plays a uh, main role in making this uh, in the paper, in the paper in the form of uh, PNID. So that others, other discipline can uh, understand this PNID and then uh, make it to the uh, next form, like uh, that uh, in the plant form. So the mechanical engineers, uh, so especially uh, uh, are the other discipline, like this uh, instrumentation engineer, all the other discipline engineers need to understand how to read the PNIDs. So that they will be taking the inputs and then they will be proceeding the their uh, work, the engineering work based on the input from the PNIDs so that they can do their part, that the other part of the engineering, like mechanical engineer, they will do the piping and then the static, mechanical static and rotary will do their, uh, this one, like static equipment, like vessels, and then the rotary will be working on the pumps, compressors, and the instrument will be working on their instrument part. So the PNID, PNID is piping and instrumentation diagram. The PNID is a, a graphical representation of the process units the following, uh, like the flow direction of the fluids, and then the line tagging, and then the material of construction, insulation, and then the instrument with tag numbers, the instruments like flow meter, pressure transmitter, temperature transmitter, and the analyzers, and some control schemes. And equipment with the nameplate details like uh, pumps, compressor, columns, vessels, etc. PNID actually PNID form the basis for engineering and construction, which inputs are taken for process and operation uh, for uh, like making procedure like shutup, shutdown, commissioning, and cause and effect diagram for the instrument. And mechanical for mechanical, it is like a data sheet, isometrics, manual walls, insulation thickness. And for instrumentation, for the data sheet, control walls, shutdown walls, control scheme, interlocks. And electrical heat tracing requirement and interlocks and motors will be there, all those things like for the pump and compressors. And this is a typical PNID for a separator. Hope uh, you people understand. Uh, uh, hope uh, you people might have uh, taken the training of the PFD. Right, uh, uh, you can respond me in the uh, chat box. Okay, so you may be knowing uh, about separator, right? Separator. Separator is like a vessel which which where the uh, feed will be gas, liquid, uh, and water. G gas, liquid in the form of like oil and water. And then once it come into the vessel, then the gas portion will be going out, and then the liquid, oil, and water will be separated in the bottom in uh, separate sections. So this is a typical representation for a separator. So you can see the separator. Uh, so one incoming flow is coming into the separator. Okay, you can see the separator. So you can see one incoming flow is coming to the separator, which is the inlet to the separator. And then uh, you can see the, uh, the one line going from the top, it is the uh, vapor outlet. And then you can see in the bottom, uh, one line hydrochloride line is there. So that line is a water water part, the water will be going in the bottom. And then the right hand side that this, this portion is. The oil separator, uh, we are not seeing that uh, separator, only that uh, project calorie only we are seeing. Yes, sir. Slide. This, this slide, vessels. Uh, sir, no, slide sir. is not visible, sir. You are still in the project gallery screen.
Is it now visible? Yes, sir, now, yes, sir, now visible. visible. Okay. So I think the uh, I shown uh, a typical PNID. That one is was visible. Now you are able to see, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, this is a PNID. This is a typical PNID. Hope you might have seen this uh, slide. I'll go to a separator. Okay, so this is a uh, separated typical separator drawing. So the uh, the incoming flow with the gas liquid will be coming inside, and then the vapor part will be going outside, and then the liquid oil plus water will be separated in the bottom. Water part will be going in the left hand side, and then the oil part will be in the right hand side. So for a separator, that that means this is a vessel. So we should have some uh, um, we should monitor the process parameters like what is the uh, 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 pressure, what is the level, what is the temperature, if, if it is like any heating is there inside. So we will be providing an instrument to measure the uh, uh, level. You can see in the left hand side, there is a LT, LC is there. And there will be a pressure transmitter at the top to monitor the pressure. So you can see that pressure be, uh, based on the level, then this will open the outlet valve. That means the bottom liquid outlet valve to maintain the level and here also this level will be in the, in the right hand side the oil part also will have a level controller level instrument and the level controller this will be going out uh, that level will be maintained through this uh, this uh, level transmitter and then through the uh, uh, oil outlet valve and then similarly uh, with respect to uh, with uh, gas so there will be a gas control valve in the top and then there will be a pressure transmitter to maintain the pressure. And based on the pressure, it will open the valve to uh, release the gas to the uh, next next downstream port section. So this is a, a typical separator arrangement. So this will be uh, in detail will be captured in the PNID. Like what are all the instruments required? Like how many level transmitters are required? How many pressure transmitters are required? What are the walls required for isolation of the uh, separator, like inlet isolation, outlet isolation? All those things will be captured in the drawing in the PNID. I'll go to the initial slide. Okay, this is the PNID. So for a vessel, they will show the uh, uh, like safety devices will be there, relief or relief system will be there, and then inlet outlet connections. And then along with the controls will be there. Controls will be there. You can see BFD, PFD, and the PNID difference. BFD is a general block diagram where it shows only the block. So what is my complete in, uh, the plant input, and then what is my plant output like that. And then process flow diagram, it will split into multiple uh, inside. It will go inside, and then it will say split the uh, whole plant into five, six sections, like high pressure section, low pressure section. If it is temperature based, it will be separated based on the temperature section wise. And then PNID will go in detail, like equipment wise. Each equipment wise, it will go in detail. Each equipment will have uh, what are the uh, monitoring uh, instruments are there, what are the controls are there to maintain the uh, parameters. So all those things will be captured in the PNID. You can see in the PNID, you can see all the data uh, related to the uh, this one uh, equipment in terms of monitoring, in terms of the safety. And so these are the following are the inputs for the PNID. PNID for making the PNID, we need a process flow diagram. That means preliminarily done by the uh, this one by the uh, before making the PNID. From the concept and then the feed stage. And then the design basis, the following condition like design conditions, control philosophy, isolation philosophy, wind and drain philosophy, tagging philosophy. So, design condition means what will be the design pressure, design temperature, these are the design conditions. And then the design capacity. And then control philosophy means uh, like, uh, so we'll be having control wall uh, to maintain the flow. So whether we need one control wall or two control wall, like that we need to, uh, this one, uh, freeze the philosophy. And then isolation philosophy, like isolation philosophy in the sense you have a pump means you need to isolate during a maintenance. So during that maintenance, you'll be isolating. So whether I need to put one isolation wall or two isolation wall. 
So those things will be captured in the isolation philosophy, and then the vent and drain philosophy. So before opening any uh, uh, any flange, any vessel or any equipment, any flange, so you need to depressurize the system, whatever you are going to open. So before opening into uh, this one, opening any anything uh, for your maintenance work, so it will be vented and drained to ensure there is no pressure inside. So those things will be captured uh, uh, this one uh, from the philosophy. What is the vent and drain philosophy? And then the tagging philosophy. There will be like uh, uh, thousands of equipments in a plant. Like uh, equipments will be there, pumps will be there, relief valves will be there, valves will be there. So all those things we, we need uh, uh, like proper tagging system. Otherwise, if, if the tagging system is not proper, then there will be like a full of complex uh, this one uh, problems will be facing. And then the material selection diagram. Material selection diagram means you are going for a like a, a inlet line, outlet line, and then the uh, water line, and then the oil, oil in the sense hydrocarbon. So once your feed will be having a complex uh, a component with a toxic material. So once the complex and then the toxic materials are separated, or the corrosive components are separated, the other parts can be made into a normal uh, MOC, like the carbon steel. So those things will be uh, provided by the material selection uh, diagram. And then the piping material specification. Piping material specification will uh, give the my uh, uh, pipe specification, like uh, whether it will be uh, like 150 pipe rating, 300 or 600 or 900 or 1,500, and, 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 and higher than that also there. So those things will be uh, defined by in the piping materials specification, which include the piping thickness, schedule, all those things. Internal diameter, ID, OD, everything will be captured in the piping materials. And then PNAD used to convey the engineering details of the plant. That means, in, if you see, a, if you want to know uh, the plant, you can. If you, if you go to the plant, you will see any equipment. You cannot get the detail. Even you cannot know what is the equipment. If if not, if if no tagging is there. So all those details you can uh, find in the PNID. So before going to a plant, you, uh, uh, the, uh, anyone can take the PNID. If, if they know how to read the PNID, they can take the PNID and then go to the plant. So they can easily uh, uh, get the details. They are substantially more complex as they are intended to give every, uh, every line while connection in the process. So, so the PNID may be looking complex because it will look like a lot of uh, uh, like congested uh, drawing. So, but once you are familiar for a particular plant, then you will be uh, familiar with the PNID also. Once you know how to read the uh, drawing. So, for equipment, it will be showing the nozzles, vent connection, drain connection, blind flanges, connecting lines. So, we can, uh, nozzles means the uh, equipment nozzle. Uh, so, where the inlet or outlet or the relief wall, all those things will be connected. Vent means to depressurize the uh, equipment. So some uh, from the uh, from the vessel, it will be connected to the venting system. So for that, the vessel will be provided with the vent, uh, vent nozzle. And then the drain. Drain is to uh, uh, drain the complete liquid uh, before going for a maintenance. And blind flanges before going for a maintenance. So you will be blinding all the inlet and outlet so that uh, when a person is going and going for work inside the uh, equipment so no or vessel so no fluid will come inside so that you will be uh, doing a, a blind uh, passive isolation and then the connecting lines connecting lines are the lines which like for the inlet and outlets incoming out not coming and then complete details of the interconnection piping and then including the line size all walls of the different type materials of the piping so it will be showing the all the interconnecting piping and then the uh, line sizes and wall sizes, and then the, the wall types. There are different walls like low wall, gate wall, ball wall. All those things will be uh, 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 mentioned in the. That means the pictorial representation will be there in the PNID. And materials for the materials of the piping like carbon steel or stainless steel or alloy steel. And the all process and safety instruments coming in the plant, including tag number, set points, etc. Process and safety instruments means like a safety wall, pressure safety wall will be there. This is the final protection for the equipment. And then the basic process control schemes, including the interlock, interlock and uh, shutdown. Before uh, activating the final uh, uh, protection system, like the safety wall, there will be a, a, this one automated system which will uh inherently protect the system uh, uh, to avoid the this one hazards 
and then the relevant basic information that is required for the construction of the plant. That means so uh, the necessary information will be there for the for the other discipline to understand and then proceed for the uh, next activity. Like for a pump means uh, mechanical engineering also work and um, uh, electrical engineering also work and instrument engineering also work. So all those information inf will be captured for that. And then so for the pump foundation will be there. So civil engineering will also there. Civil and structural team will also be there. And for the piping, they need to go for a uh, piping, put the piping in the right pipe rack. So structuring, structuring engineering is also there. And then the PNID legends. Legends of the all piping and uh, uh, instrument abbreviations is all required. So the, before making a PNID, so like there are different companies, different standards across the uh, world. So you say, for example, if you take Middle East, they will go with some uh, type of religion. If you go for Europe, they will follow a different religion. If you, if you follow uh, like uh, uh, this one, APA, they will follow different uh, religions. If you follow IBR, uh, that means Indian uh, bylaw regulation, they will follow different religions. So according to the uh, project, then that particular drawing legend will be taken. And then the line numbering system and significance of the parts of the line numbers, equipment symbols, equipment numbering system, instrument tag numbering. So all those things are related to the naming of the this one system that we'll see with the example. So you can see this is a typical uh, identification for a line number. So line number, you can see line means a pipe, pipe which carries a fluid from one place to other place. So for the pipe, we should have a line size, like what is the size of the pipe, like one inch, two inch, three inch, 10 inch, 20 inch, 30 inch, 40 inch, like that. So first we will be uh, uh, mentioning that line size, that six inch is there. And then the next LPS is there. So LPS means you can see that fluid service. So LPS may be a, a LPS team. So that if you go to that LPS, there will be another region. What is L, what is L, uh, what is P and what is S. So and then the next is 30. 30 is the plant, you know, plant unit. So if you take a refinery, there will be some 40 to 50 units in a refinery. So for that, we should have a numbering. And then the next is the line number. So in your plant, you will be having thousands of line numbers. So you'll be starting like uh, the number like from series from uh, 1001, 1002, 1003 like this. And then the next is the piping class specification, like 51cc is that. This is the piping class specification, which indicate that the piping class, in the sense like there will be a rating, pipe rating, 150 rating, 300 rating, 600 rating. And then the next MOC will be there. The MOC in the sense like carbon steel, alloy steel, and then the next trim part will, be, and then the next trim part will be the trim in the sense like inside a wall. What will be the uh, trim? Trim in the sense wall may be a carbon steel, and then the inside part of the wall will be a three one six S or a, some alloy alloyses. And then the corrosion allowance will also be mentioned in the piping class specification, like three mm, six mm, like that. And at last, there will be insulation in the system. If it is a like a hot service. Uh, in the pipeline, uh, then the, it will be mentioned with whether insulation is required or not. Those things also captured in this uh, this one, the line number identification. And then you can see this is there is one uh, diagonal box mentioned with uh, 100. So this is a steam list reference. Uh, this is uh, applicable uh, generally in case of that uh, PFD process flow diagram. And then the legends you can see this is a typical legend. So where you can see like uh, this is for a, you can see a simple circle means this is locally mounted instrument. That means uh, if you put a circle and mention like one PG pressure gauge, that means this is physically available in the site. Uh, just a minute. Uh, and you can see that uh, your circle with center line is mentioned as board mounted instrument. That means uh, this is like uh, a yeah, remote place where uh, uh, readings will be taken and then there they can see the data or they can uh, do uh, the further manipulation there. So there, like once you go into detail, then we'll uh, you'll be easily understanding this. So then PC is the pressure controller, PA is the pressure indicator, 
and PR pressure recorder. PSC is the pressure indicating controller, PRC pressure recording controller, PSV pressure safety valves. So similarly, we have a legend for all the things. For, for whatever you can see in the second column, the bottom one, you can see a gate valve. Then the global, you can see global in the center, the dark uh, circle is there. Then the check wall, you can see that uh, horizontal is there. And then the control wall, you can see control wall. So we, each equipment or each instrument will have a uh, this one, symbol. So which we need to uh, capture in the uh, PNID and that uh, so once the PNID is made that will be given to uh, uh, all other discipline to proceed for their work. So they should be able to uh, uh, identify and then uh, proceed for their and uh, for their uh, work. And then the last you can see in the last column it is mentioning about uh, that unit shutdown related like uh, is that means that means related to this uh, uh, safety, that means shutdown related things, portion units which close, shutdown wall relay, SDY. So these are the typical things. And you can see spectacle blind open, you can see the line, that means you have a uh, flange with uh, the open circle is there. This is spectacle blind and open portion. And this is the, and then the next one is a spectacle blind closed portion. So similarly, if, if whatever the PNID you see, there will be a legend sheet. So if you don't know anything in the PNID, like what is that particular wall, then you can go and see the legend and then uh, identify. Okay, this is the thing like that. And then you can see the signal, signal like pneumatic signal in the sense, uh, an instrument there will be going for uh, operating the control walls. Control walls will be there, which operated through the uh, uh, instrument there. So those signals, those signals will be shown like one line with uh, uh, two lines, the like slash parallel lines. And then see the electric, uh, this one, electronic signal. Signal, that means from uh, transmitter will uh, transmit the signal from one place to the uh, controller, from the field to the DC. So that signal will be captured through the uh, dash, dash line, the PNID. And then hydraulic signal, you can line with the L-shaped, uh, this one arrow. And then guided electromagnetic magnetic zoning fiber I think these things uh, majorly will not be captured. This pneumatic electrical, uh, this electronic signals will be captured majorly for the PNID. And then the symbol for the equipment, like you can see, like centrifugal compressors, compressor, you can see compressor, and then the, the turbine driven compressors and then motor driven compressor and then the axial compressor. So for each equipment, so there is a, there is a standard symbol which we need to follow. And this also varies uh, uh, based on the standard or the company or the client. And then the reactor, in the, you can see in the right, uh, the third right column. So it's full of like equipments, like full of vessels, like hydrocarking, tracking vessel is there, FCC vessel is there, and the reformer is there. Desaturation, all are like a column, and then the vessel separators like that. And then the bottom right, uh, bottom furnace and boiler is there. And PNADs uh, are prepared and numbered in the order of processing. Like, uh, so if you take a feed from, uh, and then and the product will be, if you say, if I have a 50 number of drawings, and then you can see the sequence. So it will start from the feed, and then it will go in a sequence. It will go to the next stage. It will go to the next stage. Say from the feed, it will go to a heat exchanger. It will go to a surge vessel. It will go to a pump. In the order, it will be there. The, the PNAD numbering will be. The main parts included in the PNAD are the drawing numbers and the details of the project for the identification reference by various users. So there is a, if, if for a plan, if 50 to 100 PNADs are there. So there will be a drawing number. And then the uh, each drawing number should be having the connection from uh, one drawing to other drawing. So all those things will be captured in the uh, draw, in the, each PNAD. So if, we, if there is a connection to the other PNAD, that particular number will be captured in the uh, each drawing. And picture is representation of all equipment, like horizontal vessel, vertical vessel, pumps, different types with the tag numbers. So it means that whatever we speak, uh, that industry equipment are there, so all those things will be captured in a picture real form, so like what we saw in the uh, legend. And then the details of all processing and utility pipings, like all the piping connections, like uh, PNAD in the sense, like PNAD is piping and instrumentation drawing. That means the piping and instrumentation, why we need the piping and instrumentation for a vessel or equipment or something. So we'll be capturing the, all the equipments and then all these things will be connected through the pipeline, pipings. 
and then all the uh, things will be monitored and the controlled and then safeguarded by the instruments. So all those things will be captured in the uh, uh, drawing. Like here they say that uh, details of process and utility pipings. Utility piping means like water, air, nitrogen, all those things will be part of the utility. Process means all hydrocarbons will be a process or any other like uh, process uh, material. Like if it is a refinery or the oil and gas, it is like we say a hydrocarbon. Utility means our like, like air, uh, instrument air, nitrogen, water, water in the sense for the uh, DM water and then the cooling water. And then the detail of instruments and control schemes like pressure, uh, the instrument and control, control scheme like the, the instrument like pressure transmitter, temperature transmitter, flow transmitter and analyzer for measuring the uh, component inside the fluid and then the control valves, safety valves, all the things we captured with the tag numbers. So all safety and shutdown requirements will be captured in the drawing. And then the process and design parameters like operating pressure, temperature, and mechanical design conditions are to be identified, are to be indicated in equipment callout details. In each uh, in the PNID, there will be if any equipment is there, so there will be a small uh, uh, data where it says that particular equipment uh, uh, data, including the design detail, like the tag number, the design pressure, design uh, temperature, operating pressure, temperature, and then the material of construction. If any capacity is there for a vessel. And then if you, uh, for exchange, that means a heat duty will be there. So all those things will be captured in the PNID. So and then the next is process notes regarding the special requirements like special materials, safety precautions, critical piping design requirements, explanation of special controls. Say this PNID is made by the chemical engineer. So how uh, uh, the chemical engineer will be knowing in detail uh, why he is providing all those things, but how the other discipline will be uh, knowing all the things. So if, uh, if, uh, if some special requirement is there, those things will be especially ca captured in the notes so that no one will miss the particular, uh, 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 this one, the, their uh, point in their uh, deliverable. And then the vendor package uh, time details. So vendor, that means so there will be part of, uh, say, in a plant, uh, the one engineering consultancy will be doing uh, 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 the complete activity and they will be uh, offloading the, some of the uh, like equipment or some of the sections to uh, third party. So they will be the master in that particular uh, uh, package in the sense, like, say, for example, compressor. So the compressor so will be given to a compressor vendor. So they will be uh, doing their compressor complete uh, documents like PIN, they will compressor vendor will make their own compressor PNID. So in our uh, engineering drawing, we'll put one box showing that uh, the detailed drawing will be provided by the vendor, that we'll be showing the vendor details. So then we need to go to that vendor PNID for seeing the compressor uh, uh, drawings. And then the interface detail, interface in the sense like the uh, upstream and downstream and then the connecting units, all those things. And then any pending information, like a PNID, say for example, engineering activity will be taking, like say for example, in phase wise, like uh, there will be like uh, uh, 30%, 60%, and 90%. Say you will be uh, uh, issuing data sheet for procurement or inquiry at the 30 to 30% 30 stage for a long lead item. So, say for example, if you want to uh, mention a capacity or the uh, duty of the exchanger, you will be knowing the preliminary some data. So, but once vendor will give the data, that will be the final data. So, that till that we receive the vendor final data, we need to keep some information hold if we are not clear. So that if we if, if we give some information and then all the other discipline work on that uh, uh, on that particular information and then finally at the end we change, then all the other discipline also need to change. So if we have some doubt on that, so we need to put hold. Whatever the information we are not clear and we are waiting for some other uh, input from the other vendor or some other discipline. So those things we need to put hold so that uh, other team will not go for a rework. So, and then general equipment symbol shape shall be as per the PNID legends. And then the elevation minimum difference in elevation how to be indicated. Say for example, if you uh, go, if you are uh, uh, showing a pump, the pump should have a minimum. So based on the pump calculation, you will be knowing the pump uh, elevation. What is the uh, elevation required from the vessel? That means pump will be at the grade, and then your vessel will be having some elevation. So you'll be considered for whatever you have considered uh, in the base calculation. So those things you need to mention so that the others, uh, other discipline will not uh, assume their own and then proceed. 
so they will stick to that uh, particular number so, uh, so this is the uh, importance for the elevation in the mentioning the pnid and equipment and instant dispatch shall be shown in the real, realistic proportions large vessel should occupy more space in pnid than a small vessel like so if, uh, then this we understand like if we are showing a column and then the exchanger exchanger will be horizontal and the column will be a vertical we should not show a exchanger very big bigger than a column so this uh, we can know by default we know so this also we need to follow the standard so once we go for a, like uh, making the pnid everything uh, we have the standard so if you take a column and then if you take a, a uh, wall and then the wall will be smaller than a column so accordingly the legend will be made the standard legend will be made so that uh, no one can uh, oversize or understand the uh, existing template and pnid we cannot scale the pnid it is not a like a execution drawing this is like a pictorial drawing we can see so we cannot scale it oh the, the exchanger is small then we should not assume this is very small we cannot uh, uh, dimensionally uh, we should not consider the pnid as a dimensional uh, drawing so in isometric handle we can that, that is a dimension drawing that we cannot uh, uh, this one, uh, use for the same for this uh, pnid so layout and all we can uh, there, there will be like scaling will be the layout and then the isometric we can use the dimensional things and pnid is like only the picture, pictorial representation and then the script for the column and reactor and vessel shall be shown like vessel uh, all those things will be kept and not in the ground they will be having some platform the platform doesn't they will be having some support or the base so the vessel will be sorry the column will be uh, supported on a skirt column and then the reactor all the vertical vessels will be kept on a skirt and then the vessel will be uh, provided supported vessel in the sense horizontal vessel will be supported on a uh, saddle support then the vessel separators uh, details of internals like impingement baffles descending spray headers mist limiter plant shall be shown say for example if you inside a, a separator so inside a separator there will be a separation uh, section will be there like inside a, a separator there will be a, a, a momentum uh, killer will be there inside a, this one uh, inside a separator inlet and then in the inside a separate there will be a partition plane to for the oil and water separation and in the bottom of the separator there will be maybe a heating coils for a heating in case of like like uh, service uh, with the congealing uh, fluid and in the vapor outlet there will be a uh, again that uh, impingement separator will be there or a demister pad will be there and uh, for the liquid outlet there will be a vertex breaker so all those things will be shown in the uh, uh, typical arrangement will be shown in the uh, pnid but the detailed drawing we need to see from the vendor only from vendor drawing only we need to see in detail and then the nozzle on the vessels to be identified with the nozzle number and their sizes all the vessel will be having nozzle like we need to connect the inlet line outlet line and then the uh, relief valves and then the instruments and then the uh, equipment entry manuals will be there so all those things will be captured in the uh, uh, pnid with the nozzle number we each nozzle will be provided the numbers so all those things will be captured and all thermal well sample connection wind drain flange spectacle blind spade relief valves so okay, this we talk now notes regarding internal coating shall be added in the note section notes in the regarding internal coating in the sense say for example you will be having a vessel with a carbon steel say for your uh, material will be having a very corrosive material and then for that you need to go for a inconal so uh, inconal will be uh, Oh, uh, we cannot compare the vessel uh, cost of inconal with the carbon steel. It is uh, equivalent to a uh, like a lesser than the gold price. So we cannot go for an inconal vessel. So what they do, they make a carbon steel vessel and then uh, make a two, three mm minimum. They will go for a three mm uh, coating on the vessel, so that their uh, vessel cost will be reduced. So that the both will be met. Uh, the corrosion criteria also met, and then the cost will also be met. So the, the, this is regarding the coating. So those things also captured in the uh, uh, P in the PNID with the section like say for example even in the coating we no need to coat the internal vessel internal with throughout the vessel. So if it is the if the liquid is corrosive only the liquid portion liquid portion will be having 50 to 60 percent of the vessel. So till that we can coat no need to coat the top portion. So those things will be uh, captured in the drawing. Based on the input from the material selection uh, uh, input. 
and all the level instrument and then the wall connected to the level instrument shall be shown in the uh, BNID. And then the flange rating, say for example, like uh, if based on the operating and then the design pressure, then then flange flange uh, rating will be there. Like if it is like a ton bar gauge design pressure means the flange will be like uh, rated with uh, 150 rating, 150 pounds. Then if it is like 30 bar, then they will go for a 300. If it is uh, say 100 bar gauge, they will go for a 9, 900 to 1,500 uh, pound. Say for example, flange rating, especially we need to mention in case where there is a, a change in spec is there. Say vessel will be, generally vessel will be uh, provided with a higher, higher flange rating. Say you, uh, your operation is with a 150 rating, where the pipelines are connected with the 150 rating piping and then the vessel vendor may give with a 300 pound rating. So there we need to mention, especially we need to mention the uh, flange rating, wherever that there's a change in uh, flange rating is there, which uh, we need to uh, note that. RS everyone will go for a 150 rating plan design. And we need to capture these things in the PNID. And then this is the typical separator. So you can see that level transmitter is shown for controlling the level and then uh, and then how it is maintaining the level. It will open the wall in the bottom to maintain the level. If the level is going on, this will open the wall more so that the liquid will be drained out fast. And heat exchanger, heat exchanger symbol shall be shown as per the TMA. Uh, actually, TMA is like one kind of uh, this one standard, which uh, the, uh, there are many uh, industrial uh, this one, uh, exchanger manufacturers are there, uh, there with, with respect to different standards. So whatever the standard follow, then that particular symbol we need to mention. And then the all the inlet and outlet nozzle shall be marked and then the heat duty. Heat duty for exchanger will be mentioned if it is exchanger and then the inlet Outlet nozzle, okay, that's fine. And then the air coolers, air coolers means uh, uh, like heat exchanger will be having like uh, two fluids, one hot fluid and cold fluid passing through the pipeline inside the exchanger. And then the air cooler is means one side will be fluid passing through the pipe and the other will be the ambient air uh, pushed through a fan. So for a fan means for a, for this particular air cooler, we need to mention that we will be showing the fan and then the motor details in the drawing. And this is a typical heat exchanger you can see here. So heat exchanger, uh, this is the heat exchanger with the inlet and outlet isolation walls for the maintenance and then the drain purpose. How you will drain the exchanger in case of uh, uh, this one opening the exchanger and then pulling out the bundle or the cleaning the bundle through hydro, hydro jetting. And then the safety device finisher that will also we need to capture in the drawing. And then this is the typical, the bottom one is the typical air cooler uh, drawing. You can see in the left hand side, the top is the inlet and in the bottom is the outlet. You can see that in the, uh, the center bottom, there is a fan shown here. And then the compressor, you can see a typical compressor arrangement. The compressor, wherever the compressor is there, compressor will come with like a intersection knockout drum and the discharge cooler. The, because the compressor, when you compress, the temperature goes high. And yeah, KOD is required because you need a, uh, to, you need to compress only the gas. If you can, if liquid goes inside, the compressor will damage. So to avoid that, so we will be having each compressor wherever you see a compressor. So the compressor will have a, a knockout drum to knock any liquid, even if it is a clean service. So they will have a uh, knockout drum to knock the any liquid, and then the, they will ensure that only the gas is going to the compressor. And then the discharge whenever compress. It compress and the temperature will go high and then the, there will be cooler to, re to go back to the normal suction temperature or it depends based on the process and then the safety device you can see that there is a relief valve in the compressor discharge so this is a relief device based on the compressor type and then you can see the transmitter like in the discharge you have a pt pressure transmitter and then you can see one ac is there this is anti surge control and then you can see that is going to a wall so in case of any blockage in the discharge, so this will immediately sense the pressure increase and then it will immediately open the uh, recycle source, recycle source, and then it will put back to the suction. The capacity and power will be mentioned, and then the knockout drum, anti surge wall, and then the control systems, and then suction and discharge instruments, and then local control panels will be there. And then shield flushing and level system for a compressor is a comp actually compressor is a rotary uh, machine. So for, for uh, whatever the rotary machine is there, we should have a lubrication system 
and C system is required. Since it is a rotary, there will be a shaft connected to the compressor. So through the shaft, there is a chance of leaking of the process gas. So if it should not come out, even if it come out, it should not come to the atmosphere. So for that, there will be a seal system will be there. So they will uh, put a high pressure. So uh, how the how it will leak? That means from high pressure to low pressure, it will leak. So what they do, uh, they will put a high pressure in the leak side. They will take a line from the discharge because discharge is having higher than the suction. So if the, suction, if the shaft is in the suction side, they will take a line from the discharge and put it in the uh, this one, the seal as a seal fluid, so that the uh, it will not go from the uh, high pressure to low pressure through the uh, shaft. So we, since we uh, took the discharge uh, gas from the discharge and then putting it to the shaft, so then the the leakage will not happen. Even if that leaks, then again it will there will have an, again uh, secondary seal system will be there for the complete production. So all these things will be captured in the compressor vendor PNADs. This PNAD will show basic things, and then the, the detailed PNAD will be shown by the vendor. In the next uh, pumps pumps will similar to the pumps. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, compressor will have a only gas and similar to uh, that, and pumps will have only a liquid. And pump uh, suction in pump only liquid should go. There should not be any solid. Solid in the sense there will be like minor particles size will be uh, allowed. That will be uh, suggested by the vendor uh, through this much micron is allowed. Uh, through to the pump. If it is going beyond that, then the pump will have impeller will damage. So to avoid that, the pump will be provided with the suction filter, like the strain as they used to call. And then the pump recycle line. Similarly, uh, like so, if there is no any flow and uh, we want to run the pump without stopping, and then uh, then we can run the pump with the minimum recirculation line, so that the pump will not be uh, generating more heat, and that will lead to a cavitation. And this minimum circulation uh, flow, whether required or not, that will be provided. That will be requested by the pump vendor. Pump vendor is suggest, then we need to provide. That by default, almost all the pump will be provided, except like some cooling water pumps or that those things. And then the pump uh, drain lines and their destinations. So the pump will be uh, going for a maintenance, like compressor, and both will be going for a maintenance. So the respective vent and drain lines will be shown in the pump, and then compressor drains. And then the instrument instrument for the operation of the pump and then the safeguarding like the pump will be in the discharge there will be a pressure transmitter if the pressure is going high high then it will stop the pump and beyond that there will be a relief for mechanical device so all those things will be captured and in the suction also if the pressure is going low then we need to stop the pump saying that uh, that, uh, that there is no liquid or that some other form of it is indicating some other form like the suction strainer is choked like that and then the local control panel, like there will be like on off system will be there for the pump. So those things will be captured in the PNAD. And then similarly, uh, 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 for the pump also, seal system, flush system will be there. Lubrication system will be there for the this one, uh, rotating that uh, shaft section. And then the seal system for uh, to avoid the leakages. So in the pump, if the, the, the tag number will be displayed in the PNAD with the capacity, like how much meter cube per hour, like 100 meter cube per hour, 1000 meter cube per hour, like this. And then whether it is horizontal type of pump, like uh, horizontal centrifugal or uh, multi-stage vertical, all those details will be captured. And then the motor kilowatt, like motor ratings will be there. And then the speed, speed 1,500 RPM, 3,000. There are two RPMs. One is 1,500 and then the 3,000. If it is VFD, then no need to mention that RPM. And then the construction of the pump, like it will be generally, the pump will be manufactured with the higher grade MOC. Even if the... Uh, um, a body is uh, uh, carbon steel that impeller will be made with the stainless steel or some other hybrid. And the manufacturer, uh, generally, a manufacturer, if like, uh, many, like some company name will be there. So, those things that they can mention if required. This manufacturer is optional only. And then the model, if that company is uh, giving a standard model, so that particular standard model number will be there. Otherwise, if it is like custom made for that particular. Uh, uh, project, then no need to mention. If it is standard model, is there means we can go and buy uh, from their catalog itself. The each vendor will be having some catalog showing their standard things. 
so that they can see their standard uh, their uh, pumping arrangement and then the standard curve standard capacity everything we can see uh, from their catalog and then we can order so generally uh, these things will not be uh, applicable for the like bigger fan only like some package items they can go for a standard like water things and the water and flare system like so all the venting will be going to the flare flare means uh, venting the system to a safe location so that uh, so uh, to avoid any like uh, uh, environmental issues so flare system will be uh, uh, carrying the uh, gases from the like, uh, relief of psv set pressures we need to mention the pnd and capacity of the flare will be there and then the elevation height of the elevated stack that st uh, flare will stack will be approximately in the refinery and all it will be minimum 100 meter height will be there that will be uh, calculated and then suggested by that uh, technical safety team through that uh, dispersion analysis and then the sensing instrument sensing instrument anything is there those things be uh, shown in the pnid and then the type of flare this is the PA, typical arrangement so each flare system will be having a knockout drum knockout drum flare will be meant to handle only flare the that flare in the sense burn the gases only so here we need only the gas at the top so we should not uh, that means at 100 meter height only gas will be burned if liquid goes that that's all then fireballs will come out so to avoid that we will be having a knockout drum in the uh, uh, in the flare inlet so here there will be a, a knockout drum in the flare inlet to knock all the liquids only gas will be going and then there will be a liquid seal system will be there liquid seal system is to prevent the uh, ambient gas going back to the uh, process system okay so there will be liquid seal will be there to avoid the backflow and then there is you can see in the flare tip uh, flare stack you can see there is a gas field this is also a velocity field this will also avoid the uh, backflow from the um, uh, ambient so the, for that there will be a, a constant purging will be there purging will be there then the arrangement will be such that it will allow only the uh, positive flow that means the, uh, from the bottom to top flow it will allow like this Okay, then next. And then the PNID, uh, there will be heat conservation and personal production will be there. Since the uh, industry will be having like a hot and cold uh, service, so the pipeline piping will be there, equipment will be there. So all those should be uh, uh, insulated. Insulated means covered so that no personal or no environment in like uh, birds or something cannot go and sit on and uh, touch, uh, get, got, get injured. Like hot and cold one, both are there. So to avoid that, uh, insulation will be provided. So insulation, especially insulation, one for the personal point of view and other for the heat conservation point of view. So we don't want to lose the heat. If there is no insulation, heat will be transferred to the atmosphere. So to avoid that, in that case, the process temperature will go down. And then the, if the temperature go down, then the, you cannot meet the process, uh, like the parameters. Because the line need to travel from one end to other end. Say it may travel within a plant, the line may from the uh, feed battery, feed in the sense we say it as a battery limit. From the battery limit to the vessel, it may, tra it may travel up to one kilometer. That means it, the plant length may be a 250 meter. It may be traveling like 500 meter. One line may travel up to 500 meter from the battery limit to the vessel. That means it will not follow a straight path. It will follow a, the rack, rack path. So if it travels 500 meter, say assume a 10, 10 inch like line, so it will have it is having some heat heat heat, heat surface area, right? So through that heat surface area, it will lose the heat. So to avoid that, we need to provide insulation, and then uh, the temperature will drop. Say if the temperature need to maintain from uh, maintain 150, there is no insulation, it will drop to a lower lower value. So but in my destination, I need 150. So to avoid that, we, we need to provide a insula insulation with a heat conservation type. Heat conservation, then it will not uh, lose the, that means the thermal conductivity such that, that it will not allow the heat to transfer. And for the personal protection, the, it is like only for to avoid the this one, uh, personal touch, so to avoid the heat burn for the personal. Heat or cold burn, cold burn sent for the cold, cold uh, low temperature service. And then the insulation types like hot insulation, it may be a hot jacket, it may be that that heat condition, how you maintain the temperature in the sense, you can provide heat tracing also. One is a heat conservation, we provide just insulation. Uh, we say in some other case, we may have, be having a, uh, like during a cold condition, like winter condition or in the night condition or in cold countries, 
So if the if the temperature is, uh, is susceptible to low, there may be some open portion. Or during shutdown, there may be some uh, open portion, like uh, they will open the vessel or they will open some insulation. So during that time, so it will be left unattended, it will remain open uh, during the operation. So to avoid that, uh, they will provide a steam tracing to maintain the temperature so that the process temperature will not go beyond the lower value. If it goes beyond the lower value, it will it may go for a solidification. So to avoid that, they need a tracing, compulsory tracing, heat tracing. It may be a steam tracing or a heat tracing uh, through the electrical electric heating system. And then the personal protection. This is to avoid uh, this one. Personal protection may be a guard. Guard means they will provide a fence, uh, fencing around the pipe so that no person can go and touch directly on the surface, or they will provide insulation. And then the slope requirement. Say if we are going for a drain line. So drain line means we need to, the drain should go to the drain. Like drain will be at the uh, underground, right? Drain vessel will be in the underground or the lower elevation of the vessel. So the, we should provide a slope, slope from the source to the destination. So all those things, wherever we need a slope, then we need to mention either it should flow to the drain source vessel or the suction vessel, like that we need to provide the uh, uh, thing. So accordingly, the other discipline, like the piping engineer will work based on that. And spacing of instrument, say if you are going for an instrument, flow instrument, they, they will say the instrument engineer will say that uh, the instrument should be provided with the upstream and downstream with no bend, bend connections. They need a clear space between the, like say one meter before the instrument and two meter after the instrument, they will tell. There should not be any obstruction, that line should be straight. So those things will be provided by the vendor and then the captured in the uh, PNID so that the piping engineer will uh, design their uh, routing accordingly. Say if line, the line used only for startup and uh, say if some line will be used only during the startup condition. So those things we will mention. And location of the blinds. Blinds in the sense for the isolation purpose during maintenance or during shutdown, positive isolation. So those location we need to mention. You can see here. And then the positive isolation requirement. Positive isolation in the sense, uh, like uh, if you are going for a pump maintenance, like the pump will be going for a maintenance of one week. So one week we cannot isolate the wall and then uh, we cannot do the work. Uh, because the wall may pass or, uh, or like over a period of time, like uh, due to the high pressure or any upset in the upstream condition, so the wall may pass. Uh, so during that case, the, 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 if the equipment or the pump is in open condition, the liquid may pass and come out and make a great hazard. So to avoid that, there will be a positive isolation in the sense, like they will provide a, a plate blind. Plate in the sense, they will completely blind it. So those things will be captured in the drawing. And high point and low point wind and drain. Say high point and low point generally it is required for a like a complete piping system. They will provide a somewhere at the high point vent and then the low point drain. Venting is like to depressurize the system at the highest point. Draining is to provide the to drain the system at the lowest point. So that the complete gas is vented and then the complete liquid is drained. And the wall to be like kept locked, close and locked open. Say, for example, if we are uh, have the safety devices like safety wall there, there, so someone should not go and close uh, close the wall because that is a safety item. So no one should touch. So if unknowingly someone go and in case, so that means only the known person will be uh, working inside the plant. But by uh, because in industry there will be a huge number of walls are there. So you can see like in, in the same place you can see ten identical walls are walls will be there. You need to go and if there is no painting or there is no numbering system, we cannot identify which we need to uh, uh, open or close. So they may go for a wrong open or closing the wall. So that may this will create some other hazard. So to avoid that, um, they will paint and then they will put a lock. So that no one lock in the sense they will put a physical lock or some other arrangement such that no one will uh, even they try to open knowingly they cannot open so they need a, they, they will identify that okay to open this wall they need some permission they will go and uh, get the permission and then open so those things will be captured in the pnd and the, the walls if, if such kind of walls are there so in in each wherever the safety things are there then the, now the place this lock open lock close wall will be there and safe routing of vents and vent mesh so if it is a tank, local atmosphere tank, then uh, it will be like an open to atmosphere tank with mesh will be there. So the mesh is to avoid any uh, like birds to coming inside or insect to come inside. 
in the safe floating events, those things will be captured in the drawing. And then the control type. Control in the sense for this one, operating, uh, operating like the, the, the instrument, what we have shown the like level control to uh, maintain the level. In the PNID reading. So PNID, you can see this is the in the PNID in the right hand bottom. This template will be there where we show like how many revisions it is going. Like one, two, three is mentioned in the first top circle, uh, elliptical circle. So here you can see revision one, two, three, and the dates are there. And then the first is it is submitted for approval, second also submitted for approval, and third one is for design. You can see there are some JCF, MIT, JVS. These are the names like uh, prepared by drawing who drafted and then the who checked and then the who approved. That means from the engineering company. So, and then the, you can see client Peter and company is there. And then contractor John, how to read P and Okay, this is, this is the project name. How to read P This is the project name will be there. And this is the engineering company name will be there. And then this is the type till bug. So, this P and is for a distillation column, like, uh, like the, the pump. If it is like, uh, uh, charge pump, then that the name will be mentioned. If it's a recycle gas compressor, then that name will be mentioned. And then the PNID and then the PNID number will be there. X X Y Y one two three four five eight. These things will be there. PNID number. It is all about discuss special flow case to below the notes of the PNID. You can see the note whatever we have mentioned like like notes. If we want to especially tell some point, then I need to mention the note section. All notes must be clearly understood while studying the PNIDs. Each will have a significance or input for further engineering operation. Okay, field to blind connection, connection for used oil drain, drain. So those things, whatever you feel that the process engineer feel, this we need to communicate. That means to the next discipline and to the plant team, operation team. All those things will be captured here. Then isolation of the equipment, we saw like location of the valve, blind drain, bypass of the equipment. If any, say for example, if you have pump or say, say for example, exchanger. Exchanger means uh, there are tubes are there. So there may, tubes may be uh, going for uh, like, uh, uh, maybe plugged or uh, like over a period of time, uh, tubes may be choked due to certain, certain condition, maybe due to corrosion or some other uh, like foreign particles plugging the tubes. So during that time, the pressure drop will be going high and then we need to uh, clean the uh, uh, this one exchanger. So in that case, we need to have a bypass in such cases. If pressure drop is a criteria, or in that case, uh, we will have a standby uh, equipment also. Like for pump, we will have a standby pump, and bypass valve will be like for exchanger will be there bypass. They they can uh, do the work in three days, and for that three days they will not use the exchanger. Then they will adjust the process parameter accordingly. And then the purging connection for flushing and uh, this one draining uh, connection uh, during maintenance, those things will be captured. And control scheme, type of controllers, startup or a DSD, bypass control valves. So all those things will be shown in the drawing. Startup or in the sense there will be some system which will uh, trip the system. Say if the flow is low, low, I need to trip the pump. So when you start the pump, the initially the flow will be low, obviously, right? So at that time, it will trip the pump. So to avoid that, uh, tripping the pump during the initial stage startup, so they will override that particular trip. Those things we need to mention in the PNID. So that the other discipline capture in their uh, respective deliverable. And then the PNID shall include the following letters, revision, date, scope, all those things will be captured, what we have seen in the nameplate under the PNID. And then the process flow, and then the flow direction of the fluids, equipment nameplate details, size, Piping size, class, specification. If any break, spec break is there, that will be captured here. And then the instrumentation control scheme and shutdown systems, all the equipment with isolation and bypass valves, lock open, lock close, slope drain vent, under package, insulation tracing details, special instruction capture in notes. Okay, finish. I think one hour finished. Uh, Uh, okay, uh, ma'am, uh, is there any question Question on the chat box or we can allow the participant to unmute and ask questions? Uh, sir, we have questions. We have the okay. question posted. Uh, is the uh, session over, sir? We'll uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, okay, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for the elaborative session. We'll take on the questions now. Okay.
So actually, PNAD is like typically like uh, like uh, when you work, uh, will be more familiar. So we see theoretically, if we see the PNAD, we'll see uh, like it is some um, looking like some complex drawing. Okay, so uh, uh, at what stage materials and walls are to be selected? Material actually uh, during the feed stage. That means uh, 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 we will be getting input for the uh, PNID. Like there will be a material selection diagram will be there. So this will be uh, uh, developed by a separate material correction team will be there. They will decide based on the PFD process flow diagram. So they will decide the material. So okay, this is the vessel inlet. Vessel inlet uh, will be having a combination of all corrosive fluid as well as the, like uh, this one toxic. All the thing will be there. So once it goes to the vessel, the bottom of the vessel will be having only the liquid, and then the corrosive gas will be going at the top. So like that, all those study will be done by the team, and then they will finally tell that in the material selection diagram, the separator inlet should have the carbon. Sorry, separator inlet should have the SS. And separator bottom, separator bottom shall, shall have a CS carbon steel, and separator uh, overhead line shall have a uh, stainless steel. So those details will be given uh, before uh, we're preparing the input, preparing the drawing uh, by the material selection uh, team. Uh, during that, we can say it as a, like a feed stage. Uh, and that is like a, uh, parallelly uh, going on by the this one by the engineering uh, engineering team. Uh, there is a separate department itself. They will give that uh, data and then the valves and all, so, and they will give the same. Say, for example, we are going for a valves MOC and they will also sell the, for the piping, they told uh, SS, right? And they will tell again for the gas, they will not go for if they are going for a valve, they will not go for a valve with a SS valve, full SS valve. They will tell the valve will be with the carbon steel and then the trim will be with SS, higher grade. Because that that inner part of the valve will be facing the complete uh, this one uh, fluid. Even for the carbon steel, they will go for a higher grade of uh, material like uh, stainless steel. So if it is a line is SS, then they will go for a SS valve. If the line is a carbon steel, they will go for a carbon steel valve with the uh, stainless steel trims. That means inner part of the valve, that means the gate portion, the closing portion of the valve will be having a uh, this one stainless steel trim. Trim means. The where they will have a tight contact between the uh, like ceiling ceiling material like uh, you can say that a tight contact part will be with the SS so that it will not easily uh, uh, erode or corrode. So uh, all those things will be captured in the material selection dra drawing and then they will give that detail like including the corrosion elements they will give. Oh, okay, sir. Next question. Uh, could you elaborate spec break in? Uh, piping, especially equipment nozzle. Uh, yes, so equipment nozzle, say we have the line rating, uh, line rating say 300. 300 means say my working pressure, you can see the inlet line is coming here, right? So inlet line will be having operating pressure of 30. So for the 30, there will be approximate pressure rating will be 300. So ambient temperature, 30 bar gauge, uh, pressure rating will be 300. And the vendor will give the complete vessel for the this for the uh, uh, design pressure. Say the uh, design pressure is uh, 45, so they will go with the design pressure of 45. And for that, they can go with the 300 rating. But vendor will propose a 600 rating nozzle. So they will provide a 600 uh, rating nozzle on the vessel flange only on the vessel. The vendor will give the vessel with the flange all nozzles. So in their flange, they will give a 600 rating. And then we will be doing the line with the 300 rating. Engineering team will go for the line design with 300 rating and the valves also 300 rating. And then finally, the equipment connecting the vessel will be having 300 by default, right? So since the vendor is giving 600 rating, so that the connecting flange and the piping should also have a 600 rating flange. So this there we need to mention here. This portion we need to mention. Otherwise, what will happen? That piping engineer will give a line rating 300. I will connect the 300 uh, the line to the vessel with the 300 rating flange. But once, and then they will order accordingly. And then once it comes to the slide, once they go for the execution and connecting the flange, then the both flange will not uh, match. That means we cannot uh, connect both the flange. Same size, say 10 inch, 10 inch, uh, 300 rating, 600, we cannot connect. 
so during the last moment oh this is not connected so we need to go for a, uh, buying a new flange means that, that is not possible this is a project there will be thousands of flanges will be there in a project in a, in a particular plant so at that time you cannot go and buy a new plant it will take again time so you cannot uh, connect and if you cannot connect we cannot uh, complete the uh, this one construction then it, this will lead a, a subsequent delay in the project so ultimately huge loss so to avoid that, uh, wherever there is a this one, flange rating is there, then the different spec break is there, then we need to mention. And then similarly, a, re a relief valve. Relief valve will be providing the piping, and then the relief valve will give you an X rating only, generally. So accordingly, uh, we need to uh, this one mention. Wherever there is a spec change, so we need to mention. If we are not clear, waiting for the vendor, we need to put hold. So that the equipment will not go for a uh, like a procurement. They, they say uh, bill of material. They have to say that. So wherever there is a like vessel, we have seen there are many places in the uh, this one. In the, in, in, this is for this separator. I say similarly, compressor will have a air pressure rating. Now almost all the vendor packages will have that strict uh, break. Generally for the uh, this one for the uh, flange rating. Piping uh, that material speak like SSCS that will be very rare, rare. especially compressor. All the pump part will be generally SS. Other like vessel and all carbon steel will be there, carbon steel, carbon steel. So wherever that the only that uh, equipment part will be there, equipment nozzles will be there. So uh, for the MOC chain, generally spec uh, that uh, pressure rating change will be there by default. So that those things we need to capture in the PNID. Oh, is that next clear? Next, next, next question. Uh, which software is available for piping design drawings? So this uh, actually this is the AutoCAD. Uh, we need to make this is the conventional uh, system going on, still going on, and there are some other like smart plant PNAD systems are there, uh, 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 like uh, license softwares are there. Uh, that is like a systematic way uh, where uh, that uh, like after making the drawing in the AutoCAD, uh, we cannot extract all in a, like a Excel sheet. So uh, there are uh, software came recently which we can we make the drawing. And then say if we make a hundred drawing, and then we name all the time. There will be wall numbers, there will be uh, line numbers. So in the smart plan PNID, so if we make all the PNIDs in like hundred PNIDs in the smart plan, in one click we can take all the wall numbers. In one click we can take all the line numbers. But if it is in the like a conventional method AutoCAD, but maybe that advanced system will be there, but it is very difficult. So that there are latest uh, uh, this one uh, software scheme and which are almost uh, uh, implemented in all the industries in the, in the engineering companies. Smart plan P and Okay, sir. Uh, but AutoCAD is the basic which we need to learn. But basic is the AutoCAD. There are also AutoCAD background or not by through AutoCAD will be there, but it is having a uh, uh, additional package. Okay, oh. next next. Next question, uh, for highly viscous fluid, what kind of pump will be used to transport the fluid? Okay, highly viscous fluid. So like uh, for if it is a highly viscous, the, the, if you do the hydraulics for a higher pressure, so there will be a uh, through hydraulic calculation, you will come to know like the, how much distance we need to, it need to travel and all. So you'll be getting a higher back pressure if it is high viscous liquid. So obviously we will need to go for a multi-stage pump, multi-stage pump, and then the, if the capacity is high, then it will be going for a centrifugal pump. If the capacity is low, then they will go for a rotary pump, like a gear pump will be there, screw pump will be there. Okay, next question. What is the difference between regulating valve and globe regulating valve? Regulating valve, regulating valve in the sense we are talking here is, is like a control valve. Control valve is like control valve generally it will be a global for flow control. And there are other types of valves are there. Like butterfly also we can use for control. There are different types of valves available. Valve valve also we can use for control. Generally global will be used for the control. The next control valve will be used is the butterfly valve. Uh, that there is no uh, difference in that uh, regulating and then this one. There is a difference in the self-regulating valve. Self-regulating valve in the sense it not it does not need any uh, external uh, source to uh, uh, operate the uh, this one valve. That means for a control valve, uh, instrument air is required or a hydraulic fluid is required uh, to operate the control valve open and close. For a self-regulated valve, 
it, it will take the pressure from the upstream or downstream source from the upstream or the downstream where it is uh, placed if the valve is placed in the line so in the particular line upstream or uh, downstream uh, fluid it will take and then uh, control the pressure by one through the mechanical action that but for the process control uh, only the controllers will be there self regulating will be there where there is a constant uh, source of fluid is required like flare patching is there like those in those place only uh, self regulating valves will be used and that will that the self regulating valves are only used for low flow low flow capacities and generally uh, in all the operating system there will be control valve which will be operated through a instrument yes, so next uh, next uh, importance of car seal cso or csc yes car seal we say right lock open lock close valve so like we say now uh, uh, earlier and all initially it was like the car seal that means seal means they will provide a like the locking like they will provide a wire with a uh, ceiling like uh, uh, we used to go to supermarket they used to provide one uh, uh, bag wrapping right so similar kind of things were there and then they will provide one steel like how government uh, provide a steel or the government lock close like that so like that they will provide a seal uh, this was an old system conventional system uh, but uh, this like over a period of time the, the valve may not be operated for more than one year two two years or not uh, valve may not be unattended but the wire may be uh, uh, broken and then not available in that place in that case people will go, go and open the valve right so to avoid that the the, the recent system they made like uh, physically like a loto lockout tagger procedures were made through the safety uh, like the, the stringent systems were made so that uh, by any chance it should not open or close without uh, this one permission this car seal and car seal open and close are like that this one like uh, this one, uh, putting the lock on the walls physical lock i mean to say like physical lock will be there lock with the key will be there that key will be kept in uh, by the, the department hod or that uh, discipline each discipline hod will be having the whole own key like electrical will be say for a pump i say for a pump mechanical and uh, instrument and electrical uh, three people will work so for mechanical people will open the pump impeller and then work and then they will finish okay so and then whether uh, someone can go and uh, switch on the pump right so instrument people also need to finish their work right so to uh, to avoid these conflicts so uh, there will be one lock with uh, sorry two lock three lock provided on the same system so that uh, once the work is completed all three people will come give clearance to open the valve so these are the system advanced system uh, next question uh, pur purpose of using kod in compressor yeah kod is to is knock out drum this will knock the liquid compressor is meant for only for gas so to avoid any liquid going into the thing like uh, we need a vessel in the suction uh, there will be a demister pad at the uh, top so that will uh, give a this one the, uh, like uh, sudden impingement will cause a uh, knocking so this will if any vapor along with the, like uh, entrained liquid is going the, those things will be knocked in the in the knockout drum and then only the gas part will be going to the compressor this is to avoid any uh, liquid particles uh, going into the compressor and the knockout drum there will be a level system will be there monitoring system will be there and then if the level goes high and then this will uh, stop the compressor if the level, uh, if it is like continuously we are getting liquid means by the design itself we will be knowing then we will be having the complete uh, uh, safety system the level is keep on continuously coming then we'll be having control wall at the bottom and then uh, draining the liquid continuously and then if still the level goes high we need to stop the compressor okay next, next question uh, what is the function of hydrocyclone yeah this hydrocyclone is actually here it is known there will be separate uh, this one uh, like this is the liquid this is the water water will go to the hydrocyclone so water may this is separator water may have traces of oil right so to avoid that so only water should go to that uh, this water may go to a process or go to the atmosphere so in that once it is going to the other other system there will there say if it is going to atmosphere so that there should not be any oil particle right 
so uh, there will be traces of oil will be carried uh, carried into this uh, this one and the water then that will be separated through, through the hydrocarbon hydrocarbon here it is shown as like this uh, for that there will be separate package will be there it will be going to a separate small equipment like that so there there will separate the oil and uh, water and then only the pure water pure in the sense that water with uh, uh, the uh, spec meeting the environmental condition so it will be uh, discharged to the atmosphere and then the traces of oil will be absorbed in the hydrocarbon and that will be recycled to the process uh, what is desanding spray header desanding spray header desanding spray header desanding uh, desanding spray header in this one. actually in the bottom of the separator there will be like uh, because the oil is coming from the wells like say for example from the underground the oil is coming from the wells so it will be having uh, obviously sand particles so those particles will be captured in the first vessel first and the uh, first vessel generally it will be captured in the first vessel so the first vessel of the plant will be having these things like uh, the sand will be deposited at the bottom and then those things will be removed over a period of time so those will will choke the outlet line right those choke the outlet line so accordingly what they do they will if this is the case then for the first vessel there will be having a two vessel for the this one if there is they are not having like a uh, standby vessel to clean the system yes. over a period of time they will go for a online cleaning online this is uh, say why once in each day they will uh, this one uh, remove the sand by through some system there will be additional nozzles in the uh, vessel bottom to cl clean the, those things and spray is like this one to push like there will be some system nitrogen arsen system will be there uh, to uh, to declog that particular sand sand portion to defree that sand portion and for that we no need to if, we, if the system is there no need to go for a vessel maintenance we go need to open the vessel and clean go one person will go and clean not required generally if like industry if this is the main case they, they will go with the two vessel one vessel uh, will be operating and the other will be in standby way where it will be cleaned and kept ready for the this one whenever the first vessel uh, got this one like this issue and then they will uh, switch out the vessel generally the in industry like not refinery and all not there in the industry will be having like online spray system will be there and then, then the upstream uh, system plants they will have the uh, system with the, like standby vessel to clean that sand particle uh, next ma'am next uh, what is meant by no liquid pockets on flare line and no vapor pockets in a liquid flowing line okay then flare line means uh, so say for example you are venting the uh, gas to the flare system right so over a period of time the gas may uh, create a liquid gas in the sense they say assume some condensable portions are going so this is traveling to the flare tip right flare tip in the sense it will be traveling like uh, like in, in in terms of kilometer in a refinery okay so uh, through the, uh, the the travel path the if the condensable gases are going so it will condense and uh, uh, flow in the line so if the line is designed with uh, pockets pocket in the sense the line will go up and go down and then go up like that so by inherently the line uh, the yeah, the liquid will uh, go on uh, go to the lower portion right so then that that pocket will collect the liquid and then it will block the path gas path so if if that is pass, uh, blocking the gas path then the flow to the gas line will be uh, the gas gas flow will be blocked and one more thing say assume uh, uh, we are uh, ensuring that that gas uh, yeah, there is no condensable so and one more thing is that, that there are uh, liquids with the congealing once the temperature goes to atmosphere the liquid will form like a solid so in that case if traces of gases are going okay, if the traces of that uh, that uh, hydrocarbon liquids are going that will be very trace so over a period of time in the sense like years you take 5 years over a period of 5 years it will slowly accumulate 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 and then form a solid solid on the line on the pocket and the finally it will be blocked so this the, to avoid this we need should not have any pocket whether uh, the line should be going up or going down 
so where if any any liquid is formed then it will come come to the upstream vessel or it go to the downstream vessel so this is the pocket in the vapor line similarly in the liquid line you say if it is a pump so if, if uh, liquid part actually there is no like line can go up and down no issue if the vapor is going in the liquid line especially that is uh, especially for a pump case then that will create a cavitation to the sun that will that uh, vapor pocket will go and suddenly impinge on the pump impeller that means the rotating uh, impeller so this will damage the impeller damage is and uh, that's all uh, that we need to change the pump uh, the change the impeller the production loss will be there and then impeller means you should have the spare so this by default will be uh, uh, captured in the vessel uh, system in the vessel if the vessel bottom is going to the pump so there it will be taken care so uh, there is the uh, liquid there will be pocket pocket in the sense the liquid lines will go up and down uh why they will make sure that gas is not going under a liquid line so they will in the vessel itself they will have a certain system like they will uh, arrest through the level if the level goes low low then they will stop the pump uh so yes, next Oh uh, yeah, difference between limit switch and limit indicator. Uh, switch is like a switch will take the action, like a stop or a stop or start. And uh, indicator is just only for seeing. We will be actually seeing. It will not take any action. Switch is like if the level goes high high, it will whatever the action assigned, then it will do the action switch. indication is like only for seeing will be seeing will be seeing and then take our uh, we, uh, we we take the action oh the level is going high we need to take action the switch will take its own action whatever the action assigned to it because we are not able to handle then it will take the action whatever assigned to it once it reaches that uh, set value okay sir uh next question how to prepare pms how to select flange rating flange rating first flange rating is like initially um, during that uh, not in the pna district during the uh, uh, pfd state during that bfd like that they will make the schematic they will be knowing the operating pressure what is my plant uh, feed pressure what are the my feed pressure what are all my uh, product pressure so this we will be knowing and there will be certain uh, say if a reaction is going on so there will be certain operating parameters we need to maintain say if my battery limit pressure feed pressure is say uh, 10 bar gauge and my product pressure i need is i need to put my product in the storage tank so that i don't want pressure so i need say and the pump i will have some five bar gauge okay so in between the reaction in between i need to have some reaction right so the reaction temperature may be temperature and pressure may be high like the pressure may be 50 bar right so this thing we will be knowing initially the the concept concepts and then we used to say the feed so there they will freeze all these things so that means and the the battery limit it will be like 150 rating and then and the next pressure i i am i need to increase the pressure from 10 to 50 so i will be going for a pump or compressor if it is gas compressor this liquid and pump then the pump i will not design the pump for 50 because my operating is 50 and then i need to design the pump with like 50 to 60 and then the line loss we need to consider right based on that i will say again go for a rating selection that means we can directly say 150 pounds pounds means that a psi that 14.5 psi is one uh, one bar gauge right so if my operating literally we can say if my operating pressure is 10 then my uh, uh, our, that pound uh, i will select like 150 pound if my operating pressure is 50 i will select that uh, multiply 15 to 40 15 multiply that similarly with uh, some margin so those things will be captured in the initial stage based on the operating pressure will be uh, operating and then the design how we consider design uh, like minimum design pressure margin we need to consider 3.5 so if my operating pressure is 2 uh, uh, i will take some 10 percent margin what is the 10 percent margin 10 or 20 percent margin so 20 percent margin means 2.4 so i will not design for 2.4 i will design with the margin of 3.5 2 plus 3.5 i will design with that pressure and for that these things there will be guideline there will be standard which we need to follow minimum design pressure we should not go if we go for a higher design pressure more than 7 then we have certain uh, additional uh, safety system we need to provide so all those things will be uh, uh, considered in the initial stage this is a rating pressure rating 
and then the next one ma'am next question uh, sir uh, uh, that's it for the questions any more questions you can please unmute yourself and ask yes ma'am they can ask when we go for hands on they will come to know in detail oh, okay sir you can unmute yourself or you can ask in chat if needed if there's I no questions question. yeah yeah please is there uh, a um, every pnrd has a different different symbol i mean that uh, no, the symbol is different um, i mean that little bit uh, differences in the symbols uh, and lesion is yeah, every can... pnrd has different uh, symbol no no like mean for a project uh, the symbol will be final say if you are working for a, any client like ongc so when this okay. will follow some standard okay so when this will follow a legion legion particular to that they will have like tie up with like eop or gay sorry that uh, eal they will have some engineering tie up they will follow a certain legion if they are going for some other vendor like uh, some other like U eop or bechtel you say bechtel and uh, eal engineering india limited so both will follow different legion okay that means wall will be having okay. wall there will be minor changes will be there minor difference will be there in the legion and each pnd it will not uh, be different wall means if it is a gate wall gate wall in a particular project in a gate wall means it will have a same uh, symbol through the project and in all the pnds in all the uh, units okay if there is uh, any difference uh, between the symbols then uh, uh, all are mentioned in the pnid or not yeah, no uh, if we, there is any uh, means like we follow uh, we, we there, there is there will not be no different because that engineering company only making right say for example eal is making eal will give will have their in their uh, portal in their system they will have that only le that legend who are making the drawing they can take only the particular get one means they can take only that wall they cannot make their own and say for example if we are going for a compressor vendor compressor will follow their own system legion okay they will not follow our legion understood right okay. so there yes, the, there will be a the, we will show the get wall in one form they will show get wall in different form but they will show their legion for their pnids okay okay but in the throughout okay. the pnid say for example uh, el is making for ondc plant sir there will may be some 20 plants in a refinery so throughout the 20 plant there will be get wall means they will show the same symbol in the get wall there will be thousands of pnid in 20 plant means there will be 2000 uh, pnids so all the pnids will have same legend for one wall okay. so get wall means they will have the same type of uh, arrangement otherwise and why unless otherwise like it is like vendor related things okay got it thank you okay. any more questions Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. Sir, who will prepare PNID? PNID, uh, like uh, it is from the process department. Designer will be there. Designer, like uh, process engineers, are not capable of drawing that much. So there will be designer who is fully uh, familiar with the uh, AutoCAD. AutoCAD is the primary requirement for the PNID. So there will be designers. So they will uh, prepare the drawing, and then the input will be given by the process engineers. Okay. And uh, what is it we will uh, uh, got this PNID? What can you repeat the question? So what which stage we will find PNID? PNID is the input for all the discipline. Like uh, if we are working for an engineering company, if we are going for a manufacturing any plant, uh, any plant. Okay. So first uh, the input to the other discipline is PNID. First we will get the layout and all. Layout is like uh, like my, my, my mechanical part, piping part. So with the layout, all those the equipment locations, all those things will be fixed by the mechanical department. And then initially uh, process team will be working on the block flow diagram and then the PFD and then the next stage is PNID. After the PNID start, that means that they will PNID will be finished the thirty percent. So that thirty percent input will be given to the all the disciplines. So that other disciplines, say mechanical engineers and then the electrical instrument engineers, all those people will come to know. Okay, in this plant, I have this many equipment, this many pumps, I have this many instruments. So based on that, they will initiate their works. 
and then the next is 60 percent stage and then the piping engineer will go for the model that means if i go for pnd is completed 60 percent the piping model team will model that means they will have the layout everything finalized and then they will model in the sense they will go for a 3d model of the whole plant whatever you see in the like in the, in the industry everything will be modeled uh, before the construction from the model they will take the drawing so for the other all other discipline pnd is the input so first deliverable to the uh, other discipline all other discipline which all other can understand easily is the pnd and they need to start with the pnd okay thank you uh, so till 30 percent review there is no involvement of piping engineer in this uh, pnd preparation right yeah they, they will work on uh, yeah no, not again. by that time we will be process engineering will be getting the input from the piping engineer say for example i will be going for a pump calculation right so i need to give some preliminary information for the pump so i will need to know that from the layout where is the vessel where is the my sl located and where is my pump located so i will get a yeah, layout pipe routine actually from the, yeah, layout will be prepared based on this P and ID, right? No, no, layout will be like initially we have the land, right? Initially we'll have the land based on the yeah. standards where, where the pump will be located, where the heat exchanger will be located, where the furnace will be located. So all those will be uh, finalized in the layout initially. I don't yeah, know. Before, I, am in the uh, before I don't know of... the. Uh, yeah, I don't know the uh, location of the because P and ID, I make it 2D representation only. I'm making. So I don't know where it is in the plant. So I need to refer. Yeah. I need to yeah, refer but the, in the initial, uh, but in the initial stage, they doesn't know how many pumps will be coming, how yeah, many exchangers will be coming. In. Yeah, there is one PFD deliverable is there. Right? Yeah, yeah, PFD will be the process flow diagram. So that will be the base input for that. Okay. The okay. PFD will have all those details, like pumps, all the equipment, till control will be there. There will be no line size in the PNID. Sorry, PF, uh, PFD, no line size. Yeah will be there. So, uh, so those things they will capture from the uh, this thing like uh, what is the line size, what is the line writing all those things they will capture from the here and uh, that particular that piping team will give the piping material spec. So, we will give the operating condition to them and they will give the rating uh, This is uh, for this uh, they need to like um, we will be doing some calculation right. So, I will say 6 inch. So, 6 inch what thickness I need to take. So that piping engineer will make that uh, schedule for this particular rating for 6 inch, 10 inch, 12 inch, 24 inch. This is the thickness and they will give all those details. Okay. So after that PNAD uh, will be prepared uh, in between like in, till that 30 percent, there, there will be continuous contact between the uh, process and the piping team. But officially they uh, like they cannot start their deliverable because if I change because 60% uh, only I say, uh, it depends, 60% only I say to model in the 3D. So if they model initially parallelly when I am working, after some time, uh, what I do, I will change my line size, right? And then they also yeah. need to change, right? And they will find that there is no space. They will also route everything and then they will find no space. If I uh, make it a bigger line, then they, they will say there is no space. We have routed all the things. Uh, you change one line, I need to, I don't find any space, I need to model. So the, it, oh. this will delay the project. So to avoid that, there, there will be like each company will, uh, that engineering company will have some certain, certain certain. In this is in alignment with the client. Okay. If they start Actually, uh, do, do, yes. Yeah. Do, during PFT preparation, uh, the area will be finalized, right? Yes. 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 The total area. Yes, so yes. Uh, if we are not getting the expected output, I mean expected oh. uh, product, then uh, okay. what we will do? That means from the process team, PNID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That means you know, right? Uh, you know the PFD, right? One, uh, from the battery limit, it will go to the first vessel. So in the layout, you know the battery limit, and then you know the uh, first vessel, right? You will be knowing. So and you will be, I don't know how to route the pipe because I show only the line connecting battery limit to the vessel and one vessel to other yeah, vessel. Yeah. You only know Actually, the layout, you can route, uh, you, you, you only decide in which path you can take, you, how many racks you can put. You only decide. So you can put your own. But uh, if, the thing is that if I change, you also need to change. So uh, that, that, actually, this is like for a theoretical I am speaking. If you are experienced, I am experienced, you will do. You understood, yeah. right? Even yeah, I, yeah. I will not ask for the go for a piping. Since I am experienced, I will take my, the layout and I know I have worked on many projects, right? So I will take the layout and then I will uh, take the data, my own, and then I will uh, work. 
but officially we need to get it through the respective system engineers engineers through the like uh, the ch channel yeah okay actually uh, after this uh, 30% we have hasab so okay. during that hasab review they are finding uh, to reroute the piping uh -huh. so that time uh, yeah that time we need to do that hasab uh, will happen like say some other percentage uh, like say uh, not in the maybe say as in 30% okay. so after, after they say we need to do we, we need to change if the if the hasab say we need to defend our design because uh, yeah. uh, that means before going for the review we uh, we matter as a team that means piping engineer also the part of that team like input so that means yeah, yeah, yeah. we all in line we will defend our design and then if if we don't have the answer we, we need to agreements uh, then we need to follow and change the thing <laughs> there are many i will say one example there are many cases in the plant they have constructed the complete building building in the sense the complete pillar column they will make right column that beam yeah, yeah yeah they made yeah, right yeah, they yeah. made and then Stretcher. they are exploring they made everything made and then one vessel they need to put inside the that particular floor they cannot put the vessel inside because the vessel cannot go horizontal or cannot go vertical once it come to side this, this this case happened what finally they did they again took back and then they cut the vessel and then this one because we cannot demolish the like fourth floor right so if it is a mezzanine mm. floor if it is a spray tower we cannot go and demolish the thing right and one yeah. more thing happened like uh, generator uh, the say so what they did uh, they have made a copy paste of the existing generator so what they did they made a, uh, given uh, everything data to them and finally vendor uh, come with a larger footprint that means the generator set completely come with a skid right they will play the yeah. skid directly so yeah. they have come up with a higher footprint so but once it come to the side they don't have the space to install so this project okay. happened in two years the two years work is completely waste they don't have the space inside the plant to place that so they need to go for a oh. new procurement of the new like a separate private party area for it and the, like these things oh. will happen like things will happen these are the like like revisit so this is na this is why this is happening the review step is not happening the, the company is saying you follow at uh, 30% you follow at 60% so that someone yeah, better yeah. skip it because there are many people working right in an engineering company Yeah, and if the what the thing is that then like half of the work people will leave the company, like you say, uh, so the project is going on some two years. Uh, so after six months, one people go, and then Maybe, after one yeah, year, one yeah. people go. The, these uh, communication gaps will be there. So 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 that's why we need to follow some uh, like uh, path. So all mm. the uh, all the engineers company will follow this these things. For small small yeah. thing, okay, no issue. For small small brownfield project, like if I need to change one leaf wall. those things and all okay for a, going for a big new plant so this thing yeah, uh, yeah. should be yeah. followed otherwise it will be a mess at the end yes yes thank you uh okay, thank you other? uh thank you sir i think uh, we don't have any more questions uh, we can wind up the session uh thank you for taking time and uh, taking the session sir thank you so much and also to everyone who have pa participated very actively in the session thank you you'll be having the assessment uh, for this module tomorrow from 11 to 11:30 am thank you one thank you everyone uh, thank you one thank you team thank you